Hey there, this is Mike Grasso from Private Code Games. Um, I'm coding by night and teaching middle school math by day. And one of the things that I see a lot is uh, people who want to get into coding want to try out Scratch to make video games, and they're not really sure where to start. So this video is about basic movement in Scratch. I think that's a great way to learn the basics of the Scratch interface and get yourself started, get your feet wet without feeling too frustrated and without feeling too threatened. All right, so we have our scratch window right here. This is our actual screen of what our player will be seeing. So I'm going to start uh, by showing that we have a little sprite here, the little cat. Um, he is currently uh, selected down here, and his name is Sprite1. I'm going to change that right away and make it player. I think it's good to start by making sure things are named what you intend them to be. And then I want to point out something really important to you, uh, two things really important to you before we move on. The first is we have our green arrow. Clicking the green arrow, that's our go arrow. That's basically what we click when we want the game to start. Um, the red stop sign is what we click when we want it to stop. Um, that will be very important in a moment. The other thing I want to bring up is you can see that this sprite has an X coordinate value and a Y value. And so they're both set to zero right now. But if I were to, say, change X to 50, well, you can see my sprite moves over to the right. If I put it up to maybe even 500, whoa, he flies over to the right. Um, he can't even go all the way to 500 because there's not enough room on the screen. Now, on the other hand, if we wanted him to be over on the left, I could put negative 50, and he's a little more on the left. Or if I put back to zero, he's back in the center. So basically, if I want to start by putting in movement for him to move either right or left, I have to change the X value through code. Now this X, um, this little flag here is what we click when we want to start it. So I am going to start by going over to events here. I'm going to click it and I'm going to see that there's a code block that says when flag clicked. So anything I attach to this code block will happen and will be put into action when I click this. So if I were to, for instance, want my player to move, I'm going to go over motion over here. And I'm going to take change X by 10, attach it to here, and then anytime I click this flag, you can see his X value will go up by 10. So I can just cl keep clicking it and he keeps moving. Now that's pretty cool. That's our first little lesson in how to use code blocks. Um, however, it's still not the player controlling it. It's me controlling it by clicking this flag over and over again. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want it to be I want X to be able to change more than once when it when the game starts. So I'm going to start by going to um, I believe it's Control. Here we go. So I'm going to click on Control over here, and I'm going to get a Forever block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this Forever block to the flag, so that whenever I click this flag, whatever is inside of this forever block here will keep executing over and over again. So now if I was supposed to put change, uh, if I was to put change x by 10 in here, well, my uh, little guy keeps going and going and going, and he will continue to go anytime there's space for him to move in. So now we're getting somewhere. We're getting to a point where he is moving right on his own. Uh, I'm going to put x and y back to zero just for a moment. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to make it so that he's only moving to the right when I press the right arrow key. That's me really giving control to the player. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm already under control, but if you're not, just click on control on the left here. And I'm going to take this if blank then. This is an if statement. You find this all over the place in code. I, am, I don't even think there's many languages. I don't know if there is any coding languages that don't have if statements in some form. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the if inside of the forever um, bracket here. And the idea here is that as soon as I press this flag forever until I stop the program, it's going to keep executing this if statement. Now it says if blank, then blank. Well, in this space here, I need to put something that tells me that, that, that the computer has to sense for. So I'm going to go to sensing here. And I'm going to see that there is a block here called key space pressed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag that in here. And I know it's a good one to put in there because if you notice, this is sort of a, I wouldn't call it, I was going to say diamond shape, but it's only the ends that are diamond shape. It is a hex, uh, hexagonal shaped. And you can see here that it fits right in there. 
and then I'm going to put change X by 10. And I'm going to change key space press because I don't want him to move when I press the space bar. I want him to move when I press the right arrow. And then I'm going to click this flag. So you can already see this is all highlighted because this is running forever. And now anytime I press the right key, the right arrow key, my little cat will um, move to the right. And that's because forever and ever and ever, um, as long as my program is running, Scratch is checking to see if I have pressed the right arrow key. If the key right arrow is pressed, then it will change this player's position by uh, its X position by 10. So now we have officially uh, right movement. Now that's not very interesting unless I can also move to the left as well. Uh, Super Mario Brothers would not have been very cool um, if all you could do was go to the right. You got to be able to go left too. So I'm going to take this code block, I'm going to pop it out of forever, and I'm going to right-click it and duplicate it. So what I did now is I have two different blocks. I have if right arrow pressed, then change X by 10. And if I have key left arrow pressed, then change X by... And here's my question for you. If changing X by 10 moves me to the right, what do you think I have to change it by to move it to the left? I'll give you a few moments. The answer is negative 10. And I know this because if I go over to X, I can see that my uh, cat is at zero. If I put it as negative 10, he moves a little bit over to the left. That kind of goes back to the beginning of the video there. So now I'm going to take both of these. I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to put both of these in the forever block. And now when I click this flag, if I press my right key, he moves to the right. If I press my left arrow, he moves to the left. And I can do this as many times as I want because I have put these two if uh, blocks inside of a forever block. So it'll keep running until I either end the program or press the stop sign. Um, so now we officially have right and left movement. And now it's time for me to issue you a challenge. And what I'm going to ask for you to do is I'm going to give you the challenge, and then I want you to pause the video and try it out on your own. I will show you the answer, um, but I'm going to ask you to pause your video and give it a shot first. And if you get stuck, you can come back to the video if you need to. So the challenge is going to be add up and down movement when the player presses the up and down arrow keys. We have right and left movement already when the player... Uh, presses the right and left arrow keys. Now you're going to do the exact same thing for up and down. And if you need a hint, use Y the way we used X. Um, it's going to be the exact same thing. You're just going to use it for up and down instead. And then after that, optional, um, change the movement speed. I'm going to show you how you can play around with the movement speed, uh, have a little bit of fun, and possibly get yourself a laugh. So pause the video right now and give it a try on your own. Okay, I hope you gave that challenge a try. Um, if you didn't got stuck, I'm going to show you the answer right now. And if you just want to see the answer, well, I, I guess I'll show it to you anyway. Um, so the first thing is, if I want to put in up and down movement, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did for the right and left arrow for the up and down arrow. And I could just take these code blocks and duplicate them and then change them. But I'm going to go ahead and take them from here again so you can just have the practice of finding the code blocks again. Um, I think that's really good to just become really versed in where to find things. So under control, I'm going to get um, another if bracket here. I'm going to go to sensing, and I'm going to get if key space pressed, but I'm going to make that up arrow pressed. I am then going to right-click and duplicate because we already got it, so I'm going to make this a down arrow pressed. And now I just have to go ahead and right here, I'm going to look at this color here. You see how this is sort of like a, a, a brighter blue color? Well, I can see here that motion is brighter blue. So that's sort of a way to cheat if you're not sure where to find a block. You can um, look at the colors of ones you've already used. So this one I can see instead of getting change X by 10, I'm going to get change Y by 10. I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to get another change Y by 10 for my down arrow. The only difference is for this one, I'm going to make it negative 10 instead. And then I'm going to take these two, put it in, make sure they're all in this forever uh, little loop here. Click my green arrow and make sure it works. He moves right, he moves left, 
He moves up, he moves down. He can even do more than one at the same time. So, excellent. We have basic movement in Scratch. Now, one optional challenge I want to uh, tell you to try is let's change his movement. How would we change his movement? Well, I'm going to issue you a challenge to play around with this. Change it instead of 10 and negative 10, make it 50 um, and negative 50. And you can see that if you change all of these, there is a faster way to do this, but I will show that in a later video. And now we can see that he moves super fast. So play around with that. Have fun with it. Make him move slow. Make him move fast. Make him move backwards if you think you know how. And uh, other than that, congratulations. You're officially coding in Scratch.